Well, we certainly do want to welcome everybody once again to Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. And it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, I am so grateful and thankful that we can live stream and that we can uh, still have church whenever we can't come into our building. But it's so good to be back in our building worshiping the Lord in spirit as well as in truth. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our service. Then Brother Steve is going to come and uh, lead us in a, a hymn. Uh, Brother Mark, you got us one today. Brother Mark will then come and sing one for us. And then we'll get right into the Word of God. We're going to be in Revelation 22:17 today as our text verse. Father, how grateful and thankful we are that we can assemble ourselves together in our house of prayer again. How thankful we are for the goodness of God that has taken care of us these past few weeks. We give you praise and glory for the strength that uh, you are restoring. And God, we pray for everyone that's been mentioned this morning. You've heard every prayer request. Uh, Lord, uh, Gwen, uh, just ask you to bless her and pick her up. The Mentor family, uh, others that's been mentioned, thank you for bringing John through the episode that he had, and uh, thank you for all of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And God, as we look out across the congregation, we see faces that are not normally here. We welcome them in your precious name. It's so good to see uh, new faces, and we just praise you for that. Now, as we continue to worship today, have your way in all that will be said and done here. And may Jesus be glorified, for it's in his name I pray. Amen. Brother Steve. We're going to take a hymn and we'll turn to page 595.
Send the light. Amen. The blessed gospel light. Mark, as you get ready to come, uh, let me invite everybody to go ahead and turn your Bibles to Revelation 22. We'll be looking at verse 17 as our text, verse of Scripture, in uh, just a moment. Uh, it's good to uh, have Mark Terry here this morning. Been missing you all. Praise the Lord. Glad to see you back. And listen, all of these new faces I mentioned in my prayer just a few minutes ago, thank you all for being here. I tell everybody you can't visit us but one time, then we love you so much you're just a part of us. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right, Brother Mark, you come and bless us with a song. I believe you put in your Facebook the other day, this was your mom's favorite song. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do this for you, all right? All right. Okay, Bear.
That would have made my mama smile. <laughs> kind of brought tears to my eyes, but it would have made her smile. Because one day soon, I'll meet her in the morning. Revelation chapter 22. I want us to look at verse 17. The Bible says here, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life free. In just a moment, I want to bring to you a message that I've titled The Most Beautiful Word That Comes from the Mouth. Of Christ. The most beautiful word that comes from the mouth of Christ. Let's pray. Father, for so many years we have taken for granted our freedom to assemble. in a house of prayer. Until that is taken away from us. And what a joy it is to be able to be back in our little house of prayer. We have a number of people that are still away from us and we miss them. And we do know that they tune in by way of our live feed, and we're grateful for that. But we long for the day that the tape can be taken down, the social distancing can stop, and that we can have a neck-hugging fellowship in good time in a house of prayer once again. But until that day comes, O oh Lord, let us continue to just give each other that holy way and hug each other from a distance and love on each other from a distance. God, we pray for the soon destruction of this old terrible disease that's invaded our land, our world. May you take it and cast it into the depth of hell never to come against us again. Thank you, though, dear Lord, for what you've used it for, because there has been an awakening, and we praise you for that. Now the vessel is weakened, dear Lord, by things that we've been through, but thou art strong. So be strong in the vessel today, O Lord, and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I'm always thankful for the opportunity God gives to me to preach the Word of God. I must confess to you that I don't claim to be a good preacher. I am what I am by the grace of God. But I will say this to you, there's just nothing like being able to preach the Word of God and to be able to look out and see faces one day I'll be able to say, see smiling faces again. Amen. There's nothing like it. It seems so good to be back in our church. Just even though we're socially distanced, just to be able to see you. And not to be preaching to a computer screen. Now don't misunderstand me. I'm glad we had that that we could use because God has used it. And uh, while I couldn't see you all, I could see when you tuned in. And so we're thankful for that. But it's good to be back in church. Amen? Amen. 
And by the way, we're going to go ahead and plan Wednesday evening services again at 6 o'clock. We're going to see how this Wednesday goes uh, and if we have enough people to uh, be a part of the service, uh, we'll continue to do our Wednesday evening services. We're not going to have Sunday evening services at this time, but uh, we will continue our 1030 services on Sunday morning. Now let's get into the Word of God. Amen? Amen. The most beautiful word, and you notice I said word singular, that comes from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what single word when uttered by God is like music that goes throughout all of the heavens? Think about that. What word was spoken to Noah and his family before the earth was flooded? What was the words that the prophets of old constantly used in their messages when they preached? What one word did Jesus utter that brought Peter to him? What one word did Jesus speak more often than any other word? What is that one word which when obeyed brings joy to the angels in heaven? What is that one word when it is disobeyed that brings sorrow to the heart of Jesus? What one word sums up all the gospel story? All the gospel story. That one word that is probably inscribed over the gates, the pearly gates of heaven. What is that one word? That precious word is the word. Come. Come. It is the great word of the gospel that is uttered by our Lord time and time and time again. Now go is the word of the law thus showing the gap that is between God and us. But you see, my friend, the gospel bridges that gap. Boy, we're glad of that. That the gospel has bridged the gap between God and man. I mean, it bridges the gap, uh, the gap with Christ's great invitation. Come. Now today I want us for just a few moments to go way back in time. And I want us first of all to look at Noah and the flood. For just a moment. Now over in the book of Genesis. Chapter number 7. Verse number 1. Listen to what the Bible says here. The Bible says. The Lord has said unto Noah. Come thou. And all thy house. Into the ark. For thee have I seen. Righteous before me. In this generation. And I'd like to add. In this sinful generation. Now, Noah here is presented at the stage of history where there is a great crisis in the human race. Boy, I bet you couldn't even think that we'd be finding ourselves in that same situation right now. But bless God, we are. I mean, I've never in my life saw people sin and don't think that they're sin. And I've said so many times in your hearing, and I'll say again today, that it's fun to sin. Anybody ever, anybody in here ever had fun? I figured he'd raise his hand. Yeah. It's fun to sin. But the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And the great evangelist Freddie, Freddie Gage preached for many years, sin thrills, but then it kills. Sin fascinates, but then it assassinates. Now, the people had left God during this period of time, and after looking all over the world, God found only Noah, only Noah that was still loyal and faithful to him. 
And God told Noah of his plans to destroy the world, and he gave Noah the plan to build a big boat. A big one. Gave him the dimensions and the size. And uh, I wonder sometimes what Noah must have thought. You know, I read things into the scriptures sometimes, and I know I ought not to. But here's Noah listening to God as God gives him directions. Now, I know what I would have said. God, I ain't never built no boat before. And I'd have said it just like that, too. Now, my wife would have shook her head and says, I've never built a boat before. But I ain't never built a boat before. I don't know that I can do this. Now the Bible doesn't tell us that Noah ever said that. I'm just telling you what I would have probably said. I wish you could look at some of the things that I'd have built. And you'd know why I wouldn't have built a good boat. Amen. Now I can rig anything. If you don't believe me, you ask my wife. I can really read anything. Good readers, she said. But if you want it to look good, you better hire somebody that knows what they do. Amen? <laughs> Noah, I want you to build a big boat. I want you to build an ark. So Noah was then told to gather two of every living thing and bring it into the ark. Two of every living thing. I can't even catch a cat. <laughs> I mean, seriously, think about that. My wife, we have three cats at our house, and they're our babies. And uh, we lock them up in the carport at night because we don't want nothing to get them. Because we've got some wild animals out our way, and so we want them to stay safe during the night. and So we'll lock them up in our carport at night. Every afternoon, y'all ought to see me trying to get those cats in. <laughs> My wife calls me the cat herder. But I don't herd too good. Now, two of them I can get in pretty easily. But the little one I call the baby kitty, he's not going to come in but he wants to. And usually I'll go ahead and get the other two in and let the door down. And that's when he realizes, hey, I better go on in or I'm going to get left out tonight. But can you think about how it must have been? It had to be a God thing. Amen? There's no way that he could have herded all those animals. It had to be a God thing. And then I like what God said to him in verse 7 or in chapter 7. Verse 1. Notice what God said to Noah. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou into the ark. Now I don't know about you, but the first time God really ever let me see that, I had me a Baptist running fit. I know some of you don't know what that is. Well, when I get completely well, I'll show you. But until then, I just want you to know, listen, when I read this, I got to thinking about you coming to my house. And if I was outside doing something in my yard and Marla was already in the house, I'd look at you and I'd say, y'all go on in. Go on in. But what did God say here? God said, come thou into the ark. Come thou into the ark. You know what that means? That means he was already in there, glory to God. Amen. He was already there. Come thou into the ark. And then God flooded the earth and and all the breathing creatures died that was not on the ark. 
Friend, listen, that ark is a symbol of Christians. It is a symbol to their hope and their faith. Today, in a way, the church of the living God represents that ark. Now, Jesus is a type of the ark. But the church also is a type of the ark. Jesus provides our safety. The church provides the message of safety. Amen? Amen. So the church represents that ark. God is saying to us today, just like he said to, to Noah and, and all of his family, come into the ark, thou and all thy house. This past week, I did not have the opportunity to go to the Will Graham uh, rebooting over in Tifton at the Church of God campground. But I did have the opportunity to listen to the live stream of the rebooting. Uh, Tifton area celebration with Will Graham was supposed to take place in February. So I listened to him as he preached and he said something that that I hadn't thought about until I heard him say it. You know, the Bible teaches that in the last days, there's going to be a great falling away of the people. And he said this in his message. He said, I believe that this COVID disease is causing the great falling away of the people. He said, because some people have fallen away from the church, that love the church, and that probably won't ever come back. Probably won't ever come back. And you know, there's a lot of truth, I believe, in that. I believe that we're living in the last days. Preacher, when's Jesus coming? I don't know. Of that day and hour knoweth no man but my Father, which is in heaven. That's what Jesus said. I don't know. But all the signs of the times, of the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ is very present in this modern time that we're living in. Come thou into the ark. Come thou into the church of the living God. Come thou in the house. He's still in the saving business. Come, come. Oh, that beautiful word, come thou into the ark. Amen. Now let's move a few hundred years forward. And let's go to Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And let's look at Christ and Bartimaeus for just a second. In Mark's gospel, chapter 10, verse 46, the Bible says here, and they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, his disciples and rather a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, some people say Bartimaeus, don't make no difference. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now here is a blind man. He's sitting on the street right by the busy street, the busy way of Jericho, and he's begging. You ever beg for anything? Think about that for just a moment. You ever begged for anything? Very few of us ever beg for anything because we've been so blessed with everything. Amen. And usually the things that we beg God for, many times we wish we hadn't got after we beg God for it. I carry you back to the 1963 Plymouth Valiant. Ugliest car that was ever created. 
I drove one for free. My daddy bought it for me, paid the insurance and everything, but I wasn't happy. So I begged God for a new car. And God let me get one. But you know what come along with it? It wasn't brand new, but it was new to me. 1968 Super Sport Impala Chevrolet. Wish I had it now. Amen. Beautiful car. But you know what I got with the car? A payment book. I didn't ask God for that. But here's a man begging. And he's begging because he has no other means of living. We went to Sam's the other day. I thought I died and went to heaven. It had been that long since we'd been out. And you know, as we're getting back onto the interstate, start back home, we bought a few grocery items that we needed. And as we're getting on the interstate to come back home, there's a fellow standing right out in the middle between the exit where you get off and the exit where you get on with a big sign. Help. I need help. I'm hungry. We're seeing that more and more now. Now, I had the opportunity to serve as the assistant director and chaplain to Brother Charlie Rescue Mission a number of years ago for Brother John Gibbs. We had a fellow that, uh, that came into our establishment Brother John always insisted that everybody that come into the establishment work. He had a big sign up over the kitchen, he that doth not work doth not eat. And so he always found a lot of jobs for the men that were staying there. And we had this one gentleman to come in. And he said, I'm not going to work. And Brother John said, well, then just go ahead and pack your stuff. You're going to have to go. You can't stay. They looked at Brother John and he said, I'll probably make more money in one day standing in the medium of an interstate with a sign than you do all day long. Now, they are professional bums. You need to understand that. But then there are those that stand in need. And I've always said, when God lays it on my heart to give to someone that I see with a sign, I've never failed to stop and give. We were riding in Tifton one day a number of years ago. I remember seeing this fellow where we turned left to uh, get off of 82 and go over toward the shopping center. There was a guy standing there with a sign. And he said, I'm a United States military veteran and I need help. I had one $5 bill in my pocket and I pulled over because God spoke to my heart and I handed him that $5 bill because God spoke to my heart and led me to do that. Don't ever fail to give to someone who's begging if God leads your heart to do so. Because friend, he'll bless you beyond measure. But make sure God's leading your heart to do that. Amen? But here's a man, he's begging. And he heard that Jesus was passing by. So somebody had told him about Jesus. And he called out, Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There were many others shouting that day. Think about that. There was a crowd around Jesus. There was many other people shouting that day, calling, making much noise. But Jesus heard this voice out of the many. And the Bible teaches us that he stood still. Jesus, the Son of the living God, he stopped to hear this voice of sorrow crying out. Jesus told his disciples to call him and tell him to come to me. Come. There's that word, come. Jesus then asked the blind man what he wanted. It was answered by the blind man to see. Jesus says, go thy way, thy faith 
is made be whole. Three things Jesus did here. Number one, he was passing by. Boy, we're glad that he always passes by. He may be passing by you this morning as the preacher attempts to preach this message. He may be passing by you right now. He may be passing by you that's watching by way of the live stream. Jesus passes by. Number one, he passed by. Number two, he stopped. How many of you remember when Jesus stopped by your house? Amen. How many of you remember when Jesus reached down into your heart and saved you? You see, he stopped. And then number three, he called for the blind man to come. The blessed invitation has always been come, and it will continue to become the most beautiful word ever uttered by the Lord Jesus Christ. The word come. Now what if blind Barnabas had not called upon Jesus? What if Jesus had not told him to come? Jesus is passing our way. And it may be very, it very well may be, listen, that this may be the last time for some. Do you know the Bible says his spirit shall not always strive with a man? Once again, Jesus stands still and he calls. He's still calling and the message is still, come, come. And all we have to do is come to him. Amen. Third and last of all is the last come of the Bible. Revelation twenty two seventeen. 17, our text. And the spirit and the bride say come. And let him that heareth say come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Now there are many, 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 many more times that the beautiful word come has been spoken. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Jesus said to one rich man, go, sell whatsoever thou hast. Give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All oh, the word come. So many times in the scripture, Jesus invites us to come. All the time, this wonderful word echoes and re-echoes through the pages of God's precious Bible is summed up in this, the final invitation in God's Bible, the invitation that brings to a close all of the words and all of the invitations of the Bible and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come! And let him that hear it say, Come! And let him that is a thirst come! And whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Water is used by God to describe beauty, necessity, and it is used as an invitation to whosoever will partake of God can experience His wonderful grace, His wonderful mercy, His wonderful salvation. Come and take of the water of life free. Now as we close, listen. The word come is the gospel in a single word. That word which God spoke to Noah, which spared his life, from a flood when everyone else's was taken. Through the pages of history, prophets, apostles, and preachers like me, we've all said Jesus is still saying, 
come. The Bible tells of the cross, the crucifixion, the death, the resurrection, and God sums it up all in one word, come. Such a beautiful word, so full of tenderness, so full of love, so full of compassion, come. All that you can possibly know, all that you can possibly wonder or even think about God can be answered in one wonderful word. He stands with his arms open wide and he continues to say to the human race, I love you, come. I love you, come. So whatsoever your need may be today, his invitation has never changed. It's still come. No other word needed. It's still come. Everyone, let's stand to our feet. If you need something today, you come. Come. Father, thank you for this powerful message. Use it for your glory now. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.